What's going on guys? Uh, today we're going to be changing the ignition coils and the spark plugs on my 2011 Toyota Corolla. Uh, I know I said previously in the video that me changing the PCV helped with the RPM drop and it did, but it did not fix it. Um, it worked flawlessly for a week. I didn't have any drops or anything like that. And it was almost like the next Monday that I got in it to go to work, um, we had that same problem. So I've actually never done the maintenance regarding the spark plugs and the coil packs on this car. So we're gonna do that today. I'm gonna show you super simple process if, if somebody at home needs to do it and knock it out themselves. I wouldn't pay anybody to do it. Um, I paid probably 200 bucks for all the parts because it is fairly pricey to do this, but I bought pretty much OEM replacement and I got the best spark plugs that I could get. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll jump right into it. All right, first thing we gotta do is remove this cover. Super simple, there's four little tabs on it, two in the front, two in the back, actually just one in the back. Pops onto these little knobs you see. So super simple, you can clean this off when you get it off. Most everybody's removed this if you've done the oil on these cars before if you haven't it's an easy process now what we got to do next is for those of you who don't know you got to locate your coil packs which are these four up here they have these little black octagon little shapes i don't know what you actually call them they're not necessarily octagons but several sided pieces with these clips on it so with that bring you all over here each of these have these little tabs on it you can break these very very easy if you're not careful so um, you're supposed to be able to push on these and slide it off um, but a lot of times it doesn't lift it up over this plastic piece high enough so we're gonna get a pick and just easily help it give us some assist. But like with anything, um, whenever I do electrical, I don't know how other people do it, but if I mess with anything electrical, I'm gonna disconnect the negative on the battery. And you see mine's pretty gross already, so I need to clean that anyway. But I disconnect the battery before I touch anything electrical. It's just how I've always done it. So that's the way I'm gonna keep doing it. You, I, I've seen people not do it. I don't think it really matters. But like I said, it's just how I do it. To make things easy to reach this first, a uh, little 10 millimeter, I'm gonna just use a little pinch tab on this and unplug that, move that out the way. Now all you gotta do is take your little 10 millimeter to each of these and break these off. I'll come back and I use my hand. You can use a drill if you have it kind of helps speed up the process, but these are quite self-explanatory. Got my little pick. It's a 90. It's going to do what I needed to do. Put my thumb on the tab and help give it just a little bit of boost over that little spot. And they come off very easy. So definitely do not try to force it. But like I said, the most difficult part is getting it over that little bitty plastic piece that tends to get caught on. But once you do that, they come off easy. Now that we got those plugs off, we can actually start pulling our ignition coils. So, not too terribly difficult. They pop up out of this hole and that's what they look like so these actually don't look terrible i can't really see down in here but um i definitely am wondering what my spark plugs are going to look like because i bought this car with a thirty-three thousand miles on it and it now has a hundred and fifty-six thousand because of the angle that the motor is and this little plastic trim piece is, if you still have it, I'm going to be using a 9 sixteenths, 3 eighths with a universal, and I have a 6 inch extension. 
So I'm gonna put the socket down, get the universal going, lift this little plastic piece up, and fit it down there on that. Now we're gonna get our ratchet. And connect. And see if we can back these out real nice and slow and we can look at each plug. I'm afraid they're probably gonna be cooked. If they're not, it's gonna be a miracle. I mean, I put 120,000 miles on this car and I've never changed these, so. I'm sure everybody in the comments is gonna be roasting that aspect. you can see but they're pretty cooked at least that first one is I mean like oof that's bad especially when I pull out the new one we do a side by side <laughs> oh man okay well it's a good thing we're doing this then um I've never done it. So I'm going to go through each one and I'm going to do each one and then we'll do reassembly. Guys, what I didn't show you. Look at the top of my plug. This actually might be my problem, honestly. <laughs> Another rough one. And I probably should have told you all this, but like once I break it loose, I'm unscrewing it by my hand just to kind of feel for it, make sure everything feels right down in there. I'm gonna do the same thing when I put the spark plugs back in, is I'll hand tighten these before we sort them down to actual spec. Same story, different plug. Lastly. So the plugs that came out of the car are Denso. I'm gonna be putting some, uh, some NGKs in. I just prefer NGKs, but these are both the uh, same length, look like the same gap. Um, so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna take these, I've got a little anti-seize, and I'm gonna be putting a little anti-seize on here. I know there's kind of like a debate uh, for like Toyotas and Hondas and stuff where some people put anti-seize on the plugs, some people don't put anti-seize on the plugs. Um, I'm going to put anti C's on mine. I've always put anti C's on any spark plug that I ever replace. It's just common practice for me. You can do what you want to do. Um, I know when you don't put anti C's, they say to torque it to 15 foot pounds. Um, if you do put anti C's, I believe they say it's either 11. I think, I think it's about 11 or 12 and a half. Um, but what I do is I'm gonna put these in there and I'm going to make it snug, hand tight, and then I'm gonna do a quarter turn after that. And that should be the, the proper spec, um, at least from, that's what it says in the manual, that's what anybody who has ever done any spark plugs will tell you the same thing. It's typical standard practice that way. So let's get to it. You want to do these down by hand first so that you can ensure that you're not cross threading because if you end up cross threading these you're gonna have a bad time um, so what i'm doing is i'm just making sure that it's flush down in there center about as tight as i can do it by my hand and then i'm going to get in here Crank it down to where it's, I can feel right there that it's snug. And right
right there. That feels good. So now, pop that off. And we're done with that one. And once I put the rest of them in, I'm gonna go back through and I'll just double check them one more time before we drop the coil in. Although I went with NGK plugs um, over the Denso that were OEM in it, I did go ahead and I did get Denso uh, coil packs. So I did do that. I did want to get OEM of these. There's a couple different brands you can get um, and they all had good reviews, but you know, this is OEM, this is what was in it. And obviously it did a fantastic job if I haven't changed these plugs and packs in over 120,000 miles and they've it was running fine except for that little um, RPM drop, which I'm hoping doing all this will fix it because those plugs do look pretty bad. That could have been my problem. So I'm going to take all these out and I'm start dropping them in and uh, we'll keep going on with the process. So here's a look. New versus the old. Um, they're pretty identical. They're actually exactly identical except for this one's a little worn out. Let's see if the camera will focus. That one's new. Snug that down right there. Forgot to tell y'all. Each of these ignition coils has a rubber boot right here at the bottom. You don't have to save these if yours comes with one. Just double check that it comes with it, because if not, you can uh, clean these up and replace it, but these actually have, they came with them, so, which is good. But it's probably because they're the same brand, so. Now that they're all in place, I'm gonna take our little 10 millimeters and I'm gonna thread these in here and get them all secure. And we're gonna plug everything back in. You don't have to over tighten these either. Just make sure they're nice and snug. Good, snug fit like that. If you over tighten these, it's only plastic. It's not a metal piece and you will bust it, and you will have to get a new ignition coil pack. Here comes the last steps. We're gonna plug everything back up, making sure all of them make a click noise. And that is, uh, that's it right there. Completed, done. I'm gonna crank up the car, make sure there's no issues, and uh, we'll put the cover back on it. Like I said, that's all guys, pretty simple project something you guys can definitely do at home and I recommend doing it at home because this could cost you way more than you'd really expect it to. Uh, like I said, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the, the parts alone for me to do the whole job was roughly about $205 is what it about came out to. And I got everything from Rock Auto. I tried pricing it at like O'Reilly's, AutoZone, Advanced, and stuff like that, and it was going to be more. They wanted a lot more. They wanted probably twenty to thirty dollars more for the ignition coils. So I was like, "Nah, I'm not going to do that." I got the same ones, Denzos from Rock Auto, twenty, thirty bucks cheaper than all around. Uh, same way with the plugs. I got the best plugs that you could get on Rock Auto. The kind of best plugs that you could put in a car for roughly about the same as your generic spark plugs you'd get from those auto parts stores. So I'd recommend definitely checking them out um, and, and doing the project yourself. It, it doesn't take much time and it'll be, uh, it'll help the longevity of your car. I probably should have done mine sooner, but here we are. But other than that, uh, I appreciate y'all watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.